The sleepy waters of Bow Creek are an almost forgotten part of London's industrial heyday. But earlier this year, in a residential market that has been few on headlines, one of the world's largest developers chose this area of London to make its UK debut. And what that revealed was a stretch of river that may actually be the next development hotspot in the capital. This is Alex Peace for EG, reporting from Bow Creek, where the world's largest residential developer, Country Garden, has just bought a 785 home site. In this quiet and unassuming part of East London, it's actually got 20,000 homes under development along its banks, and we're going to take a proper in-depth look at what's going on here, and what the plans are, and how to make sure it's not going to be something like another Vauxhall or Canary Wharf. So what attracted Country Garden to come here to make its UK debut, and not Vauxhall, Canary Wharf, the Old Kent Road, nor any prime hotspots, but here? And they're not the first. Despite first appearances, the creek is not the sleepy slipway it first appears, because along the two and a half odd miles of Riverbank, there are at least 18 separate developments in the pipeline, building more homes than in Vauxhall, with some of the biggest names in the UK property market, from Barclay, British Land and Ikea to Ballymore. So what brought Country Garden here? Who else is active? What's been bought? What's still for sale? And is the area at risk of becoming another Vauxhall or the glut of oversupply? On the one hand, Bow Creek is a fascinating glimpse into London's industrial past and post-industrial decline. On the other, it's affectionately described as a dump by locals. For those not au fait with the area, it's worth taking a look at the creek in its entirety. To the north is Stratford, scene of massive regeneration and success of the London Olympics. To the south is the Thames, and for the purpose of this piece, we are just looking at the developments between the two. Geographically, it sits along the border of Newham and Tower Hamlets, zones 2 and 3, though to the north there is an LLDC planning overlap from the Olympics. But it's the amount of underused industrial land, relatively cheap land values, and relatively centralised ownerships that's acting in favour of new development. E.g. analysis of the course of the river from the Bow Roundabout to the Thames found 18 active and known about sites, 15 developers, and space for 20,000 potential homes. Despite the new interest and the new Chinese buyers, schemes have been coming along on the Bow Creek for quite some time. To my right, Southern Housing Group's Bow River Village, which is now onto its third phase. To my left, Swedish giant IKEA, for its development arm Vastent, has been bringing forward 1,200 homes on this site. It's Vastent's only London holding, and for a number of years after the Olympics, nothing happened. But this is now coming out of the ground great guns, and its position acts in its favour, controlling access to the creek from the north. Sales will start in 2019 for the scheme known as Sugarhouse Lane. And while IKEA holds the north, to the south there is Ballymore, where its 1,400 home City Island is nearing completion. Nor do Ballymore's holdings end here. Further to the south is Good Luck Hope, where a further 800 homes are in the offing. For the moment, this area is some way away, but the area has an almost seaside village feel, and has fantastic potential. Next door is Orchard Wharf. It's not got planning yet, but another 800 homes are on the cards, and Regal London are on the books for this one. But it's here, halfway up the creek, that Country Garden have chose to make their UK debut. The relatively unprossessing Elsa Wharf behind me has got planning for 785 homes. They've bought it from Lindhill and Galliard. Country Garden are the world's largest developer at the moment by unit numbers. For them to have made their UK debut here really means they see something in the site. For those not au fait with the Chinese giant, the Hong Kong listed company, headquartered in Foshan in mainland China, achieved contracted sales of 550.8 billion yuan last year and profits of 58.8 billion. In mainland China, it has 1,468 active projects in 768 towns, 220 cities and 30 provinces. By comparison, Barrett, the UK's largest house builder, had 2.7 billion of contracted sales last year and profit of 765 million in its annual results to June 2017, making it roughly a 23rd of the side of Country Garden. So what is it doing coming to Bow Creek? According to James Barton, partner at Knight Frank, it's the relatively affordable land values that are making the area viable and attractive. See, I don't necessarily think other, in London, other areas of London are struggling. I just think that this pocket of East London is overperforming. You know, the core East London market has gone up in price by about 3 to 4% over the last 18 months. But again, the key thing here is price point and affordability. I think it's relatively affordable. You know, that's, that's the real thing. It's about the lack of supply coming through to meet the demand. And as a result, it's a relatively affordable area in which to live. But that comes down to the whole strategic play between Stratford to the north and Canary Wharf to the south. And Country Garden are not alone in the area. 
to the North Peabody and Mount Anvil have just submitted plans for the Barrett Industrial Estate, while sites owned by private company Iron Mountain have a potential for hundreds, if not thousands, of more homes. To the south, Wilmot Dixon, through its regeneration arm, is redeveloping the much maligned Aberfeldy Estate, which is making access from the South Corridor far easier. And Lindhill, whose sold country garden scheme have further holdings around here. This kind of large-scale development is what London needs, but also has the potential to flood markets, as was the case in Vauxhall, and to a lesser extent Canary Wharf. Falling residential values around the capital, the price of land and rising construction costs have all pushed affordability to the limits, but so previously has a reliance on just expensive prime homes built for sale. The hope here will be a degree of affordability. In terms of some areas like Vauxhall, there's very big similarities between here and Vauxhall, what Vauxhall used to be. You know, the supply is much greater to come forward here. The price point is different. And actually, from an investment perspective, this could offer much better returns for investors. But the other thing to say here is that the end user will be predominantly owner-occupiers because of that much more affordable price point. Alongside affordability, there are different tenures. Everfieldy Village is largely affordable, as are blocks from Bow River Village. Danescroft and Barclay will be doing PRS blocks, all of which help to diversify supply and can be done before the built-for-sale element. However, the vast majority of development is still private for sale flats. Should developers not pay attention, the flood of schemes could place developers in trouble. And could the other critical angle, the ground floor and sense of place that needs to be created. Because dominated by the A12, without a new centre, the area will struggle. So what some of the landowners are hoping to do is create a new sense of place to avoid that. But it's here, right next to the hustle and bustle of the A12, the six adjoining landowners are hoping to pool their resources to create that new town centre for the area. We have the Tesco's here, Palmer Capital and Danes Hills Holdings here, that's they've got a little bit of land, the LLDC Lindhill. Together they're hoping to create a new Bromley by Bow South District Centre, which will almost act as a new town centre for the area. According to the Bromley by Bow South local plan, the new town centre is very much already on the cards, or at least being allowed for by the council. This is something that the Creek most certainly lacked, not to mention something that development in Vauxhall and other prime areas of London has often failed to create. However, retail is not always easy to stack up economically, and it's for that that two local authorities and all the adjoining landowners will need to communicate, work together and plan. One of the issues typically with ground floor retail um, or any non-residential use is the values and quite often the value of that space doesn't actually cover the cost to deliver it. So in theory it's almost as if it is some form of contribution to the wider public realm and if you can somehow pull it together and demonstrate to the local authority and the statutory advisors that this is part of the offer of the scheme and it's making a greater contribution other than just a coffee shop or some um, convenience retail then you stand a really good chance of them understanding the need to deliver it early and the fact that it is a deficit to the scheme, it's an overall contribution and a, a burden financially to that scheme. This will not necessarily be easy to create, especially when the two different local authorities sit on either side of the creek, though the area around Bromley by Bow Station is a natural centre. The real problem of course is more the A12, but even the effects of this can be mitigated by creating new high streets to the east of it. One key area of large-scale regeneration where you've got a number of landowners is to talk to each other about some of the infrastructure issues that you're going to have to deal with and understand how that can be either fairly distributed across the development sites or how you can come together to seek public sector support, particularly from central government funding programs, to help unlock those infrastructure issues very early on and enable development to move forward. But it's one particular landowner that holds the keys to much of the development on the Bow Creek. Behind me, just about, you can see the gas holders, which is a national grid site. Now that national grid site adjoins Barclays Stevenson Street, where they've just put plans in for about 3,800 homes. Combine the two of them, and Barclay has an option on all national grid sites through its St. William brand, that's over up to 5,000 homes, maybe even 6,000. So of all the estimated 20,000 homes at the creek, Barclay could have a hand in delivering nearly a third of those. At Stevenson Street, it submitted plans for 3,800 homes, a third of which need to be PRS according to the stipulations of the sale. But it's these two national grid sites, which could easily accommodate some 2,000 and 2,800 homes each, using the same calculation as for Stevenson Street, that could really bulk up the unit numbers in the area. The site opposite Aberfeldy Village has already been cleared, and sits opposite Wilmot's massive redevelopment around the estate. The gas holders next to Stevenson Street seem far quieter, but once they and Stevenson Street itself come through, they would directly connect the creek's new town centre to West Ham Tube Station, opening up even more sites for development. 
Barclays not known for oversupplying an area with fast build-out, but it is known for getting units built and helping to raise the values and viability of an area through its business model, all of which could unlock more schemes. It's not so much land assembly coming, coming along. I mean, you can see here's a lot of redundant business space. That needs to come forward. Supply needs to come forward. The good thing here is that you have that regeneration impact. You can create developments in mass and scale. This could be a glut, but most will not be built in this cycle. Hopefully, a new district centre could make all the difference, but it's far from easy to create a new community. What could be needed, other than the involvement of the world's largest residential developer, is a coordinating authority, taking a wider view of planning and infrastructure to ensure it attracts the right kind of development. But for the moment, this quiet relic of East London's industrial heritage still has a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs>